Greetings all, this is Matthew from Jefferson State Air Rifles. Today let's have a closer look at the Ninja Flex Reg and how it functions and how we might be able to repair it if it were misbehaving. I get questions and I also have seen repairs where they've been adjusted in such a way that it now produces random outputs and so let's take it apart and see how how it works and also they come preset from the factory per outputting around 20, 2000 to 2100 and with the previous iteration of the balance valve the they preferred a higher pressure and now with the new redesigned balance valves uh, we can actually produce very good outcomes with lower pressures and that way the whole system is just smoother and if we wanted to do that we're going to need to open this regulator up and pull out some of these spacers so that the low end instead of producing 2000 to 2100 psi can produce maybe closer to 1500 psi uh, and then adjust up from there and so that's exactly the case here we want to reduce that but while we're doing this, I'll talk about how you might be able to, if, if your regulator isn't performing well, what things you might do in order to help it. So, let's set some terminology. This is the Raptor drop block, and it mounts into the plenum tube, and from there, the Ninja regulator threads into the bottle, and this bonnet piece threads into uh, the drop block. So, on the regulator's bonnet, there are two set screws, or grub screws, 180 degrees from each other. And this one, the thread landed just to where I can get my 332 Allen drive into there, just missing the lower mag rail. So, I don't even have to unscrew the bonnet from the drop lock here. I can just loosen or remove these screws. I'm going to loosen it all the way out and then put it just a quarter of a thread back in uh, because there are threads underneath it here that I don't want to damage. On the second one I will go ahead and just take it all the way. Well, before I take it all the way out I broke it loose and I'm going to go ahead and use that. I'm going to make sure that this adjuster uh, ring is not causing a bind right there. So I'm going to loosen that and then I'm going to hold this so that as I start to unscrew the bottle the threads break free at this joint instead of the bottle drop. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove this screw all the way so I don't damage those threads and we can take this kind of a long-winded screw out And you can see where those grub screws were purchasing into the regulator housing there. And I want to mention that when you put these grub screws back in, do not over tighten them. And I'll show why as we get this open. I'll do that right now. So I've seen repairs where. I imagine they had this assembled and it was wiggling and before they filled it up with pressure when once it's filled up with pressure the pressure will expand this and it will land on these threads and it'll stiffen that bottle back up but I'm assuming that you know they just think it's high pressure we have to have everything super tight and so they take these little grub screws and tighten the heck out of them and what that can actually do is make this circular pocket become an oval. And now the carriage bolt, or the carriage, is not going to want to move in that oval very well. And you can sometimes see uh, scratches and it hanging up inside of there. And you'll see big scratches on that, that, that bore there. Um, but while we're here and while we have it open, it'd be a good time to maybe with compressed air, 
really clean this out because we'll see those stainless ball bearings in there and those are open to atmosphere so if you're getting dirt in there that alone can go against you as this is moving and landing on those they have to wiggle in and out each time it comes back down to seal and so just cleaning it out can really help um, and from there we'll look at this this carriage we'll notice that there are a stack of the Belleville discs spring washers here and then we see these blue spacers and because this was uh, too high of an output for what I want to tune to I'm going to be removing one of these blue spacers and the blue ones tend to be right at ten thousandths of an inch and a good starting point may be one or two of those so twenty thousandths of an inch but I will mention that I have seen different colors of washers there's some blue ones here there's a gray one I've seen red ones and uh, so a good starting point may be pulling approximately twenty thousandths of an inch it depends where you're at and where you're going to so I can't give an exact right there um, and it's not uh, I, I haven't noticed it's extremely linear like ten thousandths of an inch produces exactly this PSI it's a ballpark so um, so this one's still clean but otherwise I would clean this out very well and you know if that was super scratched up and ovaled it might be time to get a ball hone or something that can hone that out really nicely so that this can now travel freely again the other issue may come from the seat so we have this I believe it's nylon BB in there and I don't know that the camera can really show you the fineness of of that but this one looks great it looks brand new uh, I've seen repairs where I believe what happens is it's been tuned up in pressure and then without decompressing the system they run it all the way back lower and what's happening is you're adjusting and forcing pressure onto that little nylon seat and it gets crushed and so now instead of having that nice round surface that mates nicely with that little orifice in the bottom there it gets crushed and I've seen it ex extrude up into that little orifice and so now it just it, it it causes it can cause more creep so that you let your rifle set and the regulator pressure is creeping up and can be very frustrating then sometimes you have to pop it five times or something fast to get it down below to where it's in an operation zone again and they let it set and it's back to the same frustration so it is possible to replace that seat if that's the issue and one of these little um, picks can go in these holes and help you pry that out but then it's going to be important to get the appropriate size seat there that's a nice press fit inside of here and when you press it you're going to want to make sure everything's a nice smooth surface that you're pressing with and everything's square to the world because you wouldn't want to dent this on an angle and then have that seat not function uh, at all and it would just leak so so for this one I already have the spacer out ready to reassemble I have very clean hands I've been careful this whole way through and uh, I might want to lubricate this just a little bit more but uh, it looks good enough for this video to go back together <sighs> except for we don't want hair in there okay so drop this guy back in and I'm gonna move this ring positive for now as we go back together Now, as we close in on 
mounting this back, sometimes it turns out that the it stops right in the wrong spot where this phosphor fitting can't be accessed because it's stuck under the shroud. So it is possible to, you know, maybe you can even tighten this or maybe it's better to even put a spacer to where everything's oriented better. Um, but I like having this mounted in tight and then putting this, especially if I can access that or even remove the lower mag rail to where I can access these. Um, but we're going to take it in as tight as, as I can. Maybe, maybe you need just like an eighth or something of a turn and it might cause this to be a little bit wiggly, but again, once it fills up with pressure, that will stiffen up. And so it's not, it's not the need for tight, over tightening these. So as we put these back in, I will just touch them down. Gently on that side, and then gently on this side. Oops, not so gently. Just bottoming, and then just a little turn. That might have even been a touch more than I wanted. Just a touch down, and then a little turn. It's not a grip and rip situation. It's not necessary. Uh, it's already, it's still a little bit wiggly, but again, once this is all filled back up with pressure, that'll tighten up. And before I fill it with pressure, I want to adjust this ring all the way to the negative. And if you can't see this, uh, towards the tailstock with this ring, uh, decreases the pressure. So I'm going to want to set it at the lowest fill it up and then tune up in pressure until I reach my desired output. Again, it's not great to adjust this down while the system's under pressure because it can be tough on that plastic seat, but one trick is to take, and uh, I want to check that I'm not going to put a hole through my wall, so I'm going to run a flashlight and see that there is nothing in the barrel. So now I can take a two and a half millimeter Allen drive and hook it up to the bleeder screw and get my wrench ready to make uh, an adjustment down in pressure. And then I will crack the bleeder open and count to three or five and then cock and pop the rifle and make a little adjustment. Cock, pop, little adjustment. Right after, right as I'm popping it, I make the little adjustment so that the plenum pressure is dumping out. I don't have pressure behind that carriage to where I can make this adjustment and then the carriage, I'm not twisting and forcing and pressing that um, seat and crushing it. So that's one trick to reduce it and then you'd close it back without dumping your entire tank. So that's one trick to be able to come down in pressure uh, more safely. So there you have it. Hope that answers some questions and helps um, get your regulator functioning better if it is being a bit sporadic on you. Yeah, other than that, hope you're well. Stay free.